Hello there, this is Gundam UK and this is the first work in progress series video for this 1100 scale tier on the ground type model. Um, it's a pretty old one this, uh, it's been on my shelf for a very long time, but I've been looking forward to doing this one in particular because uh, I get to really dirty it up. It's going to be a nice grimy weathered battle damaged tier on ground type. So let's take a look inside, see what we've got in terms of runners. This is basically just a big HG, so I don't expect there to be any uh, difficulty in assembly. It looks pretty good um, for how old it is and what scale it's in, that kind of thing. Um, last tier I did was a space type, uh, so this is going to be a nice change. We have what's that? Run away. One, two, three. Nice weapon there. One, four. One, five. Some poly caps in there. Uh, six. Some lovely detail on here. Good to see. And seven. About eight runners. Quite a bit. Nine runners. Yeah, not a, a great deal of parts to do with. Which is nice. Interesting texture here on the shield. Didn't expect that. That's good. Um, so yeah, let's get these runners out of the bag, get them organised, and then start the assembly process. So here is the tier and ground type, now fully assembled, as you can see. And it is a heck of a chunky looking kit, and I really like it. It's, um, it, it is as everybody... Uh, tends to describe it as. It's a uh, tank on legs, definitely. Um, some interesting little details in this kit, that's for sure. Um, I really like the fact that this kind of sh like a shin shield has a kind of um, kind of texture on it. I don't know if you can see it. You can kind of see it in the light here. It has a kind of a matted texture to it, which is different. There's lots of tiny little rivets, uh, kind of rivet details here. Uh, lots of kind of uh, armour detailing here and there all over the kit. Um, I'm yet to um, add a bit of uh, damage to it because I want to uh, look up uh, just to see how other people do it first <laughs> before I go ahead and wreck it. Um, but it um, should look pretty good um, by the time I've... Um, I did some uh, some war damage. Let's have another look around the uh, around the back here. And I have this uh, kind of hand blade weapon, which I actually need to take off because I'm going to be doing some painting soon. Um, and yeah, I um, I really like this kit. I think it looks really cool, and uh, I'm looking forward to um, making it look like it's uh, been through hell and back. Uh, the weapons are absolutely ginormous, which is good. I guess this will be the, uh, the tank weapon. Uh, it has uh, this ability to extend, like so. Uh, I guess it's so it doesn't uh, kind of knock into other parts of the arm. And this attaches to the arm, just uh, here. Uh, we have a, um, a kind of another um, forearm mounted cannon here, you know, that needs some seam line removal, so I need to uh, work on that a bit. Yeah. And of course you have this uh, kind of hand blade weapon as well. So I'm going to start painting as I normally do uh, the weapons. I'm going to try out um, a new primer, well not a new primer, but a new type of primer. Um, this is uh, Alclad 2. Um, I normally use Alclad 2 uh, microfiller and primer 
as my uh, go-to primer for all my kits. But I saw this one, and this one is actually a grey gloss primer. So uh, I thought I'd give this a try this time, just to see how it performs. Um, I've got a feeling, feeling it's going to come out kind of more satin than gloss, as they, as these tend to come out a bit more satin in that regard. So I'm going to paint it in that. And then I'm going to base coat all of the weapons in this um, black grey Mr. Colour. Um, I want to get a nice glossy finish first so I can start applying some metallics to it. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Alclad 2 uh, metallics on the barrels and such just to um, add that metallic element and there uh, maybe some uh, maybe some matte or satin finished grey part grey paint for these kind of clasp pieces handle on the weapon here. So without further ado, uh, let's get started painting. Um, let's have a look into how I'm going to battle damage this thing uh, without ruining it and um, let's see how that goes. The first bit of battle damage that I want to do on here um, is some, uh, some bullet holes. So I thought about what kind of situation uh, this particular mobile suit was in at the time in which it sustained its damage. So what I thought was, I went to look as though it had just been deployed and uh, some rapscallion had managed to get hold of a quite high calibre weapon. Um, not a beam weapon, but a bullet based, sort of projectile based gun and um, it had quite a high rate of fire but in the panic they couldn't quite aim properly so they ended up strafing the entire mobile suit from the uh, bottom down here from the, from the right foot all the way up here so they didn't really do much damage just uh, peppered it with a few bullet holes from the bottom down here up to the top over here. So what I'm going to do is, um, I mean I have marked out some spots where I'm going to do these bullet holes but uh, it's not turned out, I can't see it very well against this green plastic so I'm going to just use a pen just to kind of mark out where I want these bullet holes to be. So yeah, here, I'm not sure how well we can see this on camera. It doesn't have to be absolutely precise of course because Whoever was firing the weapon at the time uh, was in a blind panic and um, had been taken out before any more damage had, could be done to the Tyran by their bazooka. So completely obliterated. Let's take you in a bit closer you can, so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so a few holes down here. Couple of holes here, maybe one there, and there in the corner, and there and there, and there. And this weapon had a, a very high rate of fire, so there were lots of uh, kind of bullet holes peppered into the armor pieces, right up here to the uh, kind of bicep, and up here. Not really accurate at all. Maybe some skimming off different parts here, maybe like a, some just kind of pinged off in other directions. But we'll get to actually doing a bit of holes in a second. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to use pin vice and I'm going to drill out all of these holes that I've made, all of these uh, drawings of holes that I've made all the way up the model. So, <clears throat> oh dear, we haven't really made much damage. <laughs> um, so let's start drilling some holes and making some bullet holes. Okay, so let's make a start. This is where the fire started. Just here. 
And of course, I don't have to be super precise or make the hole super clean because bullet holes tend to be kind of a bit more destructive rather than clean. Maybe if it was beam fire from a beam weapon, it'd be a lot cleaner. But in this case, no. Get a little bit deeper. That's good. Let's just do this one up here as well. The armor, uh, the armor on the Tyrion is of course super thick, so it doesn't really do any kind of deep damage. But I might add in a couple of um, parts where a bullet managed to stray into a certain position that sets something on fire. We will come across that but later on. Maybe a little bit deeper, it's not quite a hole yet. There we go, that's a bit better. This one as well. I'll just do a couple just to demonstrate how I'm going to do this. And then I should carry on off camera because I suspect this might take a while. So I have to bear in mind some other things like uh, sort of the angle of fire, that kind of thing. So it was often distance. Um, there's not really much accuracy going on with the uh, with the strafing fire. Okay, so now I've made a couple of holes there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, I'll zoom in a bit closer at one point so you can properly. See what I've been doing. I'm going to add a few stress marks into where the bullets have penetrated. So I've got a nice sharp knife here. And I'm just going to slice, slice it outwards. Just to add a bit more stress to the bullet holes. Kind of indicate a bit more uh, impact when the bullets hit. And hopefully, we'll be able to see this a lot clearer once I've done priming. We'll see how that goes. Let's just stress on this as well. Being very careful not to uh, slice my finger open. Scratches are fine. Here we go, that's the first couple of uh, bullet holes done. Let's zoom in a bit further so you can see, see that a bit clearer. There we go, that's the first two bullet holes done. Might just rough those up a bit more. And um, yeah, just gonna carry on doing that for the rest of the bullet holes. I think that's gonna take me a while, so let's do this part off camera. Okay, so that's the first kind of round of uh, Bullet strafing uh, now completed. Starts here on the uh, on the right shin. Goes off across this uh, heavily armoured knee piece here. A couple here in the waist, and then goes up into the bicep shoulder here, mm. and a couple just kind of strafed off the edge of this shoulder armour here. I'm going to add a few more kind of uh, nicks and bumps next. Especially here on the uh, kind of shin armor, where this is slammed down or it's been kind of uh, hit by bullets at an angle. So for the kind of bullets that are kind of um, pinged off these corners, I'm going to use uh, just a sharp-edged file here and kind of rub it into a side here. 
So it almost looks like there's a bit of a gouge in the armour, just there. I'll do that a few more times around these bullet holes, just to make it look a bit more chaotic. Um, I did some kind of stress damage to it just by um, getting my knife, jabbing it in the hole and scraping it out. And I'll keep adding these little notches here and there across all of the armour, uh, where these bullets drove across the whole mobile suit. And after that, uh, it's just a matter of adding a few more nicks and bumps, uh, especially some damage around the feet. Um, obviously, this is where most of the damage is going to accumulate. And um, all of this damage will be accentuated at the end uh, with some weathering, some streaking, and some um, particle effect, like a, like a kind of um, like an explosive carbon scoring, that kind of thing. Um, that's going to require a little bit more research too. So let's carry on um, making this tier and look all buggered up. So I have literally just gone at it uh, with this uh, kind of triangular file here just to add in some scratches all over the armour pieces where I want to see some battle damage. And I don't want to go too far so I kind of had to stop myself at this point. Um, because of course all of this weathering is going to be enhanced by painting anyway. There was grime and dirt and bits of metal all over the place and carbon scoring and that kind of thing. So um, I think that's it for this work in progress for now. I'm going to get on and start priming these uh, weapons today and start getting them ready for uh, their paint jobs. Uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.